I'm your neighborhood news reporter, Victoria Valderrama. Here I'm holding the most recent report on the Gulf of Mexico dead zone. In this latest study, scientists have found it's larger than average, even more disturbing. I learned it's not getting better. No, I'm not really surprised. You know, because this is almost annual occurrence. Dr. Xing Ping Hu with the TANUCC Heart Research Institute explains the nature of a dead zone. He says the problem starts at the Mississippi River Basin. There's a lot of uh, agricultural field where people apply fertilizers, right? So then this fertilizer, if it's not completely used by the crops, um, and some of it will be washed down into the river channel and just flow with the river down to the coast. That's called runoff, and it makes its way to the Gulf of Mexico. Then once the excess nutrients go to the ocean, it will stimulate the production of phytoplankton as well. Phytoplankton are microscopic algae, and they thrive on those excess nutrients and reproduce in massive amounts. Who says when these algae die, they deplete the oxygen in the water as they decompose. This results in low oxygen levels, creating what they call a dead zone. Why should we worry? How is this going to impact us? If the oxygen level in the water is low, some of the species will be driven away from the oxygen zone. Research surveys show the Gulf of Mexico dead zone is now the 12th largest zone on record in the 38 years of measurement. That is equal to 4 million acres of habitat potentially deadly for fish and bottom species. Currently, Baffin Bay and Oso Bay are at risk of becoming a dead zone. For fisheries, you know, fishermen go out to, to catch fish and if the low oxygen condition is present, that means they may have to go a little further offshore. As more studies are done, monitoring will also continue in the coastal bend. For Chris 6 News, I'm your neighborhood news reporter, Victoria Valderrama.